It's my pleasure to welcome uh, Jacob Vavaka from Julia Computing, and he's going to be telling us about uh, Julia Sim. Julia Computing is the sponsor of SciMelcon as well, and we thank we thank them for their sponsorship. Thank you, and thank you for having me. And today, uh, the name of this talk is Democratizing Seminar ODEs. What I want to talk about is how Julia Computing is bringing a platform in Julia Sim uh, in order to bring uh, a lot of the advancements to many different areas, many different fields, many different teams that it previously wouldn't have been uh, capable. So with that, I'll get started. And um, as we know, the Julia community is growing rapidly. It's finding its way more and more into machine learning uh, in different industries. And Julia Computing is built on top of a foundation of Julia Hub, which is an enterprise compute platform uh, for distributed compute. It's embarrassingly parallel, it's cost effective, um, and it is all designed around uh, reproducibility and optimized for Julia development in particular. And so the, uh, the flagship, the, the foundation of, of Julia computing is Julia Hub. And on top of Julia Hub, we have many different tools for different industries. So uh, we are gonna be talking about Julia Sim for physical simulations. Um, but there are currently other offerings for uh, pharma simulation, for circuit simulation. Um, there's certainly more to come in the future. But today we're going to take a look at Julia Sim in particular. And to start, uh, we're just going to kind of walk through what you might expect if you are in modeling, uh, especially within industry. Um, engineers are going to and they're going to incorporate modeling into their design process by, uh, by leveraging HPC, leveraging compute, and uh, you know, modeling the problems. They're gonna take these outputs, analyze them, and feed them back into the design. So when this works well, you have data-driven decisions that are driving your design forward. And this works really well when you can experiment quickly and, and constantly iterate. The big challenge here is that many industries have, they're held back in certain places where they're dealing with long running models and accelerating that isn't always easy. So just because you have more compute available, doesn't mean that you're automatically gonna be able to get that speed up. And uh, it's doable, but it's, it's time, it's effort. Um, you're always also going to wanna make sure that your model is uh, still got the fidelity that you're happy with. And so what we're looking at here is an answer to this problem, this challenge of pushing industry, industrial modeling forward, um, because we want engineers to have that freedom to experiment, to ask questions that maybe weren't feasible to ask before and, and uh, see what designs come out. And we believe that by enabling this, by, by giving engineers better tools, we're going to wind up with better designs. And so this introduces the concept of uh, a semi-neural ODE or a surrogate, uh, also sometimes called digital twins. And this is, um, I'm going to talk through this at a high level. This isn't meant at all to be uh, your, um, your, your in-depth explanation, but this is kind of a crash course just on what to expect because um, later on we are going to be kind of uh, fine tuning uh, some of the parameters. And so I just wanted to give a visual representation of, of what's happening. And this is uh, a representation of uh, the CTESN, the continuous time echo state network that uh, Chris, uh, Chris Rakakis, Yingbo, uh, many others at Julia Computing um, have all worked on this algorithm in order to uh, train and generate circuits. And so you can start with um, you can start with your your solutions. You have some weights going in. Um, the reservoir is something I want you to take note of. That's going to be a particular uh, uh, parameter that we're going to adjust later. And then um, in the middle, in the in the in the purple time series uh, where we integrate, that's where the continuous comes from because we're evolving this uh, differential equation over time. Um, and it's, it's all fed from these hidden states. And then at the end, 
uh, we take the output weights um, and have a uh, projection back to the state dimensions. So again, this is um, just kind of a crash course. Take note of, of the reservoir, take note of the input because this is, um, I'm trying to represent how uh, this mental model that you might have if you are do, uh, using Julia for your modeling. And, um, and then if you have more questions in particular about the CTESN, uh, there's, there's papers and other talks out there that will, that will deep dive that. And so, um, with that kind of out of the way, let's just talk about a general use case where you have a simulation that takes two hours and two hours, one time isn't so bad, but we're, we're talking about an instance where this two hours explodes because you wind up having to run the simulation many, many times in order to find optimal controls. And so this, this two hour simulation must be run 1000 times in this workflow. And it's, I think it's, uh, it's very common depending on uh, what modeling that, that you're engaged in, but, um, you know, the, the exact numbers here are, what we're going to use walking forward just through this example to kind of share um, why the work that we're doing is, is important and, and what kind of platform we're trying to build to, to answer this challenge. So that two hour simulation run a thousand times. Um, in addition to one final run at the end to uh, kind of test run just to make sure that uh, everything looks good and, and you know, it's your validation run winds up being 2002 hours. And this is obviously something that we're trying to improve. So what we propose here with the solution is injecting, uh, injecting Julia Sim in the beginning of this process. And so what we want to do is we want to train a surrogate, uh, first, uh, right out the gate, train a surrogate, and that's going to be done in order to get a faster model. So instead of running that two hour simulation, a thousand times, we wind up with something that can run in a minute. Now, training the surrogate is something that we can kick off in parallel. And again, that's something that Julia Hub, uh, the foundation of, of Julia Sim is very, very good at. And so we can leverage Julia Hub to kick off thousands of, of simulations in parallel and really only have about four hours um, of training time in this example. Is, and, uh, and then you wind up with a one minute simulation, which after a thousand runs is about uh, just under two hours, uh, one and two thirds hour. And so what we're talking about here is yes, we've cut down time, but aside from just looking at it from pure compute, where we're looking at wall clock time, um, 2000 hours is, is days. It's, it's, you know, it's really weeks because you're not an engineer, just not just going to be sitting there waiting for the next one to run. You don't always have the ability to just, make sure that they run sequentially because you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to step in different places, um, do some analysis, do some fixes. And so that 2000 hours turns into likely weeks or, or maybe a month where now when we're able to do these 1000 runs with a one minute simulation, we can take that down to just a couple hours. And so, we're still going to do a test run, a validation run at the end of it. Uh, that's our, uh, our two hours on the right, but we've taken what could be weeks or months or, or, or a month down to a single working day. And that's the difference in, uh, in a, in a industrial setting. That's the kind of thing that can really accelerate a team. So, um, allow them to ask those questions that maybe previously they didn't have the bandwidth or the time to do because, uh, you know, their project is on a particular uh, life cycle and, you know, they got to get their things out the door uh, with the analysis that they're able to do. So this is what it can look like by in injecting Julia Sim at the beginning of this process, um, bursting one-time compute, getting that surrogate, that accelerated model then is going to benefit you uh, throughout every one of those 1000 runs to optimize. So that's what we're doing. And then quickly, I just want to talk about uh, where this has been done already. 
and uh, we have seen extraordinary speed ups for HVAC models. Um, this is a, an example of a 570x speed up on a, uh, this is a 8,000 equation HVAC, eight, excuse me, 8,000 equation HVAC system. And uh, we've scaled this up even further to 100,000 equations. So when, when we did that, we got an 80x speed up and 80 doesn't sound as good as 570 maybe, but when you take into account what the current tooling is capable of, right now the best you can hope for is, is uh, real-time compute. So if you wanted to simulate a year, it would take you a year to compute that. Now with an 80 times speed up, you can simulate a year within, within four days. So um, that is really what we're talking about, changing you know, what's possible for, uh, for engineers and, and, and modelers to ask. And, uh, and then we, this has also been applied to uh, circuit systems as well. So there's a 1200 equation circuit system that got a 274 times speed up. And there's really no limit to where this can go. So um, we're looking to uh, apply this to as many industries as, as we can to uh, you know, spread these benefits. And so uh, what, I, what I'm gonna run through really quickly is just an example of this model here that you see of a DCPM motor. And uh, it is just uh, measuring the influence of uh, armature temperature on performance. And uh, just note the model parameters on the bottom right. So we have voltage and we have load. And um, we're gonna see how we can train a surrogate uh, over this model with these parameters. Um, and we're, again, we're gonna be using that CTESN uh, algorithm. And so here, um, if we could switch back to my other screen. Perfect. All right. So from Julia Hub, we have the Julia Sim FMU accelerator application. And once you launch that up, you can connect to it. And then you're faced with a dashboard. And um, I guess let me back up just for a second. There's two entry points for this. So Let's say that um, you're, you're writing this model in code. That's great. I'm going to talk about how you can reap these rewards. But if you're, if you're not writing it um, in code per se, you're using a GUI tool, or maybe you're not writing it in Julia, um, if you can generate an FMU, uh, functional mockup unit, uh, which is uh, available from virtually every modeling tool, then you can take that FMU and upload it here and get an accelerated FMU in return. So I'm going to show you how to do that by clicking new job. I'll upload an FMU. So this is a functional mock-up unit of that motor uh, model that I showed you. And then we have the ability to uh, adjust some parameters for this uh, surrogate training process. So uh, we are going to use the, uh, the algorithm that I shared with you. And then remember that reservoir. So that's the number of, of hidden nodes in here. So we can adjust this to uh, how many we think is going gonna, is gonna to be appropriate for our model, um, the number of simulations that you want to run. You can tell it uh, the time span to run over from beginning to end and the step. And then you can also enter the parameter space. Now, instead of doing this manually, I'm just going to load a configuration for the sake of time. And we will just take a look down here. So here are the uh, the load and the voltage parameters that we saw in that model. And we have a lower bound, an upper bound, and a sample point. So if you define these, you're gonna define the parameter space that this circuit gets trained over. And once you're kind of happy with, uh, with these training inputs, if you hit start new job, then you're gonna be brought back to the dashboard. You can see all your jobs. You can always come back and get the configuration that you used. Uh, you can get the report, which I'll share in a second, and then you can get that uh, accelerated FMU. So the report is something that I won't spend too much time on for the sake of time, but I do just want to point out that our team has done a phenomenal job of how to analyze these models. And uh, what you're seeing here is a really cool way to uh, to subtract some of the noise. So you can see straight away some different colors. You can kind of zoom into where the model's doing poorly, for instance. 
and uh, see where you want to train this model over or where it's safe to use this model with a high, high accuracy. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to leave that there for now, uh, just in the interest of time. And then uh, the only other thing that I wanted to jump to real quick is just show that um, you have the ability to do this in code as well. So if you are modeling Julia, good news, you have all of these uh, configurations and more where uh, you can choose the reservoir size, uh, the algorithm to use, um, the number of simulations, you know, et cetera. And so this is going to be a very uh, familiar um, syntax and, and you know, the, the same benefits. Um, and so I'm kind of flying through this, but if you could switch back to the slides, I'll just finish up. So thank you. So all of this is um, showing two different ways to start with a model and just uh, Julia Sim and then get back another accelerated model. So this FMU that we've accelerated can be uh, put back into existing tools for whichever, you know, whichever tools you're using in your workflow. So um, all those different tools that can import export FMUs can, can leverage these accelerated models. And then this is all made possible again um, because we have the ability to computationally burst on Julia Hub, and so um, that's the real benefit here is we are bringing not only the the know-how. So you know, um, instead of requiring in-depth knowledge of the particular area that you model, as well as uh, the latest machine learning machine learning techniques, as well as you know HPC infrastructure. Um, this is really simplifying a lot of that. We can auto scale to however much compute that you might need for your model. Um, we can handle all the parallelization. Um, we can also put it back into a format that uh, you're currently working with. And so all of this is really the Julia Sim platform. Now I've shared with you a couple different tools in um, the FMU Accelerator and the Julia Sim IDE, but uh, this is the platform, this is kind of the vision, and um, and this is all in an effort to uh, accelerate scientific discovery, right? So it's um, all uh, on top of all the work that has been shared here um, from the other members at Julia Computing, um, this, th this is, this is the, the main goal is to uh, accelerate these discoveries in as many different industries and fields as possible. So uh, just have a minute or two left and that's that's it for me. Well, thanks a lot, Jacob. Um, uh, I do have one question from YouTube. Um, so how do you handle the security aspects of Julia Hub and industry? It's a great question. And it's something that uh, we face every day because um, that's something I, I would say for uh, specific questions. Uh, I'd like for uh, you to reach out to um, info at juliacomputing.com or, or uh, any of our sales uh, personnel, but it's something that we've had to address on many fronts because of our existing partnerships and, and, and clients, right? So uh, we're working in um, a lot of different spaces that require uh, security, require compliance, require, uh, you know, data governance. There's there's very tight rules that we're, we're working with all the time. And so it's something that is really at the core of it, everything we do. Um, and yeah, I'd say with with specific questions, definitely reach out, and we can we can definitely answer um, what our current uh, strategy is, and and you know how we hope to improve going forward. All right, thanks, Jacob. In the interest of time, I think I'll I'll close it out. We we are thankful again to Julia Computing for being a SimulCon sponsor. Um, and now I will move on to the next talk. Thank you for having me.